Get out your colors. We're going to be looking at the circle diagrams representing the uh, ions in solution. Remember, they like you to have to draw those circle diagrams flat. So we're going to draw them. And at each point along the curve, it tells you what the solution to in the written text. It also tells you like what you need to do for the problem there. This is a really good review sheet for going along the titration curve. But we're going to do the drawings real quick. On the back too, it continues on with the different points, so it tells you what's going on each time. And those other two titration uh, chart problems, they give you one with an example. I gave you one with an example in there using millimoles. Millimoles is easier. And um, like I said, I'm going to post the link to Mrs. Beer's video so that you can watch it. She works through both of the charts. All right, so we're going to start drawing what's going on in the solution. So you get a visual aid to here. So you might need more room because I write big. So I'm going to put my first beaker over here to the left. So I'm going to draw it over here. Here's my first beaker. And this is point A on my graph. Point A. Right here. Point A. What is in solution in point A? Has any base been added? No base has been added. So at point A, all we have in there is weak acid. Because I know this because it tells me this is a weak acid strong base titration curve. The other way I could tell that this is a weak acid strong base is look where the equivalence point is. It's above 7. So that's another way to show me that this is a weak acid strong base titration curve. So the titration curve is because that equivalence point is above 7, I can tell. Now at point A, the only thing that's in solution is the um, weak acid. So I'm just going to use HA to represent my weak acid, and I'm going to use A- minus to represent my conjugate base. And then at the end, we are going to have some hydroxides, so I'm going to use hydroxides too. So the circle diagram kind of looks like this, where we put a circle, HA. HA. So I'm going to use 8 to kind of give you relative amounts. 8 HAs kind of give you relative amounts, but pretty much before any base is added, the only thing in there is going to be weak acid. Remember the dissociation of the weak acid is usually really small, minute, less than 5%. So we don't really need to concern ourselves with any other species being in the solution at this point. At point B, though, at point B on here, some of the base has been added. So, what is going on here? HA plus OH. What is that giving us? Water and conjugate base, right? Some of it is turning into conjugate base. Is a lot of it conjugate base? No, not a lot of it. Just some of it. So, for point B, Only a few of them turn into conjugate base. So I'm going to have six still stay as the acid. And two of them have now been neutralized and changed into our conjugate base. Right? So at point B, that's what we have going on. We have a little bit neutralized. We've created some conjugate base. So we should have a few of the A minuses in there with our highly concentrated amount of the HA at this point. At point C, because C is pretty much the same as C, it's just a little bit more has been neutralized. But what's going on at point D? That's important. What is point D? This is the half equivalence point. This is also where the pH should equal the what? The pKa, right? That midpoint. That's the middle of the buffer region, the half equivalence point. So if we're looking at that beaker, point D, what's going on there? What should it look like? 
the HA amount should be um, what? Equal to your A minus amount. Good. This is where we have um, equal amount, equal concentration of the HA and the A minus. Those are equal there. So I'm going to have four A minuses. And I should still have four HA. Right? Now, at point E, what's going on there? We're past that halfway point. So, which one has more concentration here? We have our concentration of our acid. We have our concentration of our conjugate base. Which one's greater after the midway point? A, the conjugate base is greater now, right? So you can also mark B that way. You could put A minus. This time is less than the HA at the B point, right? It's less than the HA. At the midpoint, they're equal, and then past the midpoint, the conjugate base is a little bit more concentrated. I know this is the midpoint because it's the middle of the buffer region. Good question, though. So, point E, how would I draw that? Out of my eight, I'm going to make six of them what? The A minus it, right? And then two of them are still HAs, right? Now we get to that equivalence point, or F. Up here at F. That's your equivalence point, right? So what does that mean? All of the acid is now what? Been neutralized. It is now gone. So what's the only thing in there? You're only going to have conjugate base plus over. So at this point, at F, we're going to have a bunch of conjugate base. G. G is past that equivalent point. I'm going to draw G over here. What has been added in excess at this point? We have excess OH here. So what is floating around in solution? OH is floating around in solution. So, uh, A lot of it. And you're going to also still have what floating around? Conjugate base will still be in here. Out of those two, though, which one drives the pH? The OH drives the pH because it's stronger, much stronger. So this is point G, okay, excess OH floating around in your beaker. The other thing to also note, even though I didn't draw it in there, if you had um, sodium hydroxide as your base, if you had that as your base, what else would be, be in each beaker? Sodium Na plus would also be in every single beaker. It's just a spectator. It's not doing anything. It's not actually participating in any of the reacting. So, but do note that the spectator would still be sitting there in solution. So if you see a spectator circle diagram in there, but you know they might draw that in there, you might see a diagram like that, realize that the spectator is still floating around in there. It's going to be in every single one of the beakers, except for the first one, because the first one, no base has been added yet. Do realize that that would happen. And uh, 
we should see some sodium floating around as well if that was the base that was 